All right, Shalom. First off, I want to start off by saying all praises, honor, and glories due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Kakarash. So all praises to the world calls God, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh by Hashem in the name of Yahweh Shai being the name of the only begotten Son. I also want to say double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and peace and mercy to the whole collect. Preaching this word in truth and sincerity on the brother talks about of the Great Millstone. He's a cam little will with another video to edify. And um, I wanted to uh, make a lesson going into this video, right? I'm going to let it play when you see the hypocrisy of these Christians, right? And the lack of understanding in the word that they have because we're in there, they're, they're pulling out certain scriptures. They're omitting, they omit the entirety of the scriptures because they know the, the precepts that go against or conflict with what they're trying to preach and they don't have an answer for it but they'll preach and they'll talk about half of the scriptures when leaving out the understanding of the other half so I'm going to grab these precepts and place on this video on this, this Lord will this be edifying come on Pastor so I'm the, to okay. you, but I'm talking to him I appreciate too. that I can multitask right. so the New Testament New Testament, New Testament theology clearly teaches that a Jew a real Jew never had anything to do with bloodline, pedigree, or true. hair. Well, let me finish what I'm true. saying. Go ahead, finish what you're saying. A true Jew is not one outwardly, but one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart by the spirit and not in the letter. Okay. And Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, we, talk about Jews and Gentiles, are right. the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in our flesh. Right. We don't so have any confidence in our black, in, in our color of our skin, our, our pedigree, so you our, our heritage. Not, not flesh. He said, we don't have any confidence in the, in the color of our skin, our pedigree. Well, it's not based on the color of your skin, right? But there is confidence in the pedigree, 100%. Because when the Lord separated the nations, he divided them, what? By nation. Right? And the Lord always had a pedigree, a chosen seed. You go to that word seed, it means of a carnal nation, semen, meaning bloodline. And that's what we're going to try to hit on, right? So this is a scripture we he quoted, Romans 2 and 20, 28. It says, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is, is that circumcision, which is, which is in the outward flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit, and not in the letter whose praise is is not of men but of the most high right so he'll read this and act like being an israelite doesn't benefit you but when you go to romans the third chapter in the first verse it says right here what advantage then had the jew right this is a question of what profit is it is there of circumcision right because that's his whole thing. He wanted to test the validity, right, of the chosen seed, of them having a, a gateway to the promises above everyone else. And that's exactly what it is, right? So it says in verse 2, much every way, meaning in every single way, they have an advantage. They have more profit. It says, pre, it says chiefly uh, because that, Unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. Right? It said chiefly because unto them was committed the oracles of the Most High. So the promises, the words, the law, statutes, and commandments were all given to Israelites. It wasn't given to the heathen ever. Right? And the Gentiles, when it deals with right being grafted in, when it deals with salvation are talking about Israelite foreigners that were spread through all these lands. That's why, like I went into in a few lessons ago, the John 10 and, uh, let me just get it, John 10 and 16, I think it was. It says, and other sheep have I, of, uh, other sheep uh, I have, which are not of this fold, them also must I bring, um, and they shall hear my voice, and there should be one fold and one shepherd. Now, when you go, into the history, right? And you go back into, I think it's Ezra's 8, 
in let me find it man because this is a beautiful precept the law deals with me yeah here it is right going in back into the second Ezra or first Ezra the ninth chapter right when, when the Lord said that he had other sheep that are not of this fold it's because what the only people in the land of Israel were in, in, in its entirety at the time in, in, in mass right for the most part were all of the tribe of Judah Benjamin and Levi now this is some history on it right now this is a uh, Second Ezra or First Ezra nine and one. It says then Ezra rising rising from the court of the temple went went to the chamber of Joanan, the son of Elisab, uh, Eliasib, um, and remained there and did eat no meat nor drink wa drink water, mourning from for the great iniquities of the multitude, um, and there was a proclamation in all Jewry. In Jerusalem to all them that were of the captivity that they should uh, be gathered together at Jerusalem and whosoever met not there within two or three days according as the elders that bear the rule appointed their cattle should be seized to the use of the temple and himself cast out from them that were of the captivity and in three days were all the tribe of Judah and Benjamin gathered together at Jerusalem in twenty in the twenty twentieth day of the ninth month. Right? Why didn't it mention Issachar, Naphtali, Manasseh? Because what those tribes were separated, going back into the history with the the captivity and the separating under King um, Solomon Esther. Right, so the Lord is always only dealing with the Israelites. So, when it said much every way, and let's go back to Romans three and one, it says, "What advantage then had the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision?" It says much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. Right. So the Israelites have all the advantage, right? You're not going to get any of the advantage being a heathen because what all the advantage is given unto Israel, the children of Israel, man. This is Acts 75. It says, um, and he gave him uh, none, none, none inheritance in it, right? Talking about when you go up, it's going into um, Abraham, right? It says, and he gave him none inheritance in it, not so much as set, as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to give it for a possession, and to his seed after him. When as yet he had no child, right? So the promise was to the seed of Abraham. It wasn't open to everybody. That's why it tells you not unto seeds, right? Let's get that. Uh, Galatians 3 and, and 16, it says, you know what? I'll start at 15. It says, I got to start up. Salaki. Verse 14, it says, that the blessing of Abraham might come to the on, on the Gentiles through Mashiach, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, who was the promise of that Spirit given to? Who were the promises made with? So, the Gentiles, the promise wasn't made to them, but the Israelites, like we read, the promises were made to them. It says, "Brethren, I speak after the uh, after the manner of a man, of men, though it be but man's covenant." Yet, if it be confirmed, and what was confirmed, right? The promises to the children of Israel, right? No man disannul it were added to, there too. So that covenant and that promise to Israel, right, was confirmed, 
right, through scriptures, through the Lord's actions, through him giving us the commandments on the tablets of stone, right, through the promise that he gave to our forefather Abraham. And you cannot add to that by getting everybody else in it, right? It says, now to Abraham and his seed, meaning singular, where the promise is made, right? He said not unto not and to seeds, meaning plural, as many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is a Mashiach. So the promises were only given to the one seed, and that seed also came from the lineage that Yahweh Shai came from, which were Israelites. So you can't open this up to everybody. It's not to seeds and many, but it's only to the seed of the promise. Like the, this is Luke 1 and 72. And it says, and to perform the promise uh, to our fathers, right? I'm going to start up a little bit. It says verse, I'm oh, sorry, 70. It says, and as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, right? So what was the promise in the Old Testament? Nobody tries to confuse that the promise of the Old Testament was only to Israelites. So this is the promise spoken by the prophets since the world began. Right? It never changed. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Right? Whose fathers? Was it to everybody's father or was the mercy promised to the Israelites' fathers? And to remember his holy covenant. And who did the Lord make a covenant? Right? These are things that I understand in the scriptures, but people try to misconstrue them because they want to add everybody in it to perform the promises made to so like it to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and remember his holy covenant that uh, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. And holiness and righteousness before him all all the days of our life. So the promise of the kingdom isn't open to everybody. It's only promised to that promise seed. Hebrews 6 and 17. All right. Hebrews 6 and 17. It says, it says, We're in the most high willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. Confirmed it by an oath. Right, you go to that word immutability. It means to be unchanged, immutable, unmutatable. Right. So the Lord said this was the immutability, immutability, immutability of his counsel to the heirs of the promise. Who are the heirs of the promise? The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It wasn't given to everybody. That by two immutable things, two unchanging things, in which it, it is impossible for the Most High to lie. Right, for the Lord to open it up to everybody, that was what was in the deal. So it would be a lie. So we know that it's impossible for the most high to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. And what people try to not to understand, they, they do their best not to understand is that it's not based on color. It's not based on look. We never said that. It is based on bloodline and being in that bloodline, it doesn't matter how you look. Right? Because Jake was always mingling with the heathen. Right? So you mingle with the heathen long enough, you're going to end up looking like him. But according to your father's side, according to her fathers, if your father's fathers, father's father's fathers go all the way back to Israel, you are of the seed of the promise. Right? It says, um, which hope we have for an anchor of, of the soul, both sure and steadfast and with which entereth into that where in the veil that within the veil whether the forerunner is for us entered even Yahweh Shai and made an high priest forever after the order of Mount Chesedek right so the promise isn't changing and this is why when you go to Romans the ninth chapter I'll end it on this verse 
Romans 9 and 1, it says, I say the truth in the Mashiach, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the, in, in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed for my, uh, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So why, why, why are Christians trying to take out the, the aspect of the promise that was made to the seed line through the flesh? Right? It says, who are Israelites to whom pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High and the promises? You see, and it even says in verse five, it says, who are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, a Mashiach came who the world in and called Jesus Christ. The only reason that he came, right, to ensure but that we get back to, to be a, a, a to be a a sacrifice for sin for the Israelites, right? So that we have access back to the promises, back to the Heavenly Father, right? Back to the blessing. Right? So who are the fathers and as whom concerning the flesh? Yahweh I came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. You see? So Christians, y'all can't you'll never be able to sit here and separate us from the promise that is. Right? So Lord willing, this is edifying. I'm gonna say call law. Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai by Shimakakara. Shalom.